Hello viewers, welcome to Civilization 5 Military Academy. Your hosts today are Matt Jin. Hey everyone. And myself, Bibor. So, we are doing today a an analysis of a game uh, submitted by King Patrick on the Civ Fanatics forums. And this is what he asks. So, he's playing with the Japanese on a Pangea map and he's trying to go for a domination victory. It's turn 268. And he's asking for advice, since it's a large map, on how to do that. So, this is what we are going to try to figure out today. Let's take a look at where he is at this moment. Uh, so if you take a look around the map, he's actually got a decent sized empire, it's okay. Um, but it looks like the AI did city spam everywhere. Uh, if you look at the Arabs over here, they are just flying with uh, all the cities. Um, and obviously one of the things he mentioned was that the Arabs have already taken over the Mongol capital. Um, so for him, for domination, that actually is one less uh, capital he has to worry about and one less civilization he has to ups be up uh, get upset at him. So that's actually not bad. Uh, you can see he's got a bunch of riflemen uh, all spread all throughout his empire. Um, and he's got a couple cannons here. Uh, Worker-wise, I think he's got four in there around the new city. And otherwise, he's doing okay. A uh, oh, couple more back in the core territory. So I think economic-wise with the workers, he's doing fine. And if you take a look at his diplomacy specifically, he's got a lot of people who are not very happy with him. Uh, mostly it's denounced us, denounced the leader they made friendship with, been fighting, covet your land. But he does have two friends. He has Augustus Caesar, who is far away from him, and Harun, uh, who is actually his neighbor and uh, probably his biggest threat, realistically, in this game. Um, social policy-wise, um, he went first liberty for some obvious uh, benefits like having citizenship and meritocracy, which did help his happiness a bit. And then he went full honor. So he went into the honor tree and got five, actually, five social policies there. Uh, Tech-wise, he has the lead. Um, he's the tech leader right now in the game. And he's currently researching Steam Power. He's five turns from Steam Power. And he also has uh, a research agreement coming up in three turns, which is probably going to be dynamite. So, looking for a militaristic perspective, he's doing just fine, tech-wise. And as well, uh, as we'll see in a little bit, he'll have a great scientist coming out soon. Uh, so not only will he have dynamite clean, uh, but once he gets the great scientist out in a few turns, he can actually bulb replaceable parts here uh, to be able to upgrade his uh, rifleman into infantry. Um, so on his question of, for his techs, he's doing actually fairly well in comparison to the AI, uh, given the turn. And that's the thing. It's always about in comparison to the AI, uh, no matter what the level you are. But I would suggest if he wants military victory, that his research path next should be electricity, telegraph, and electronics. The electronics is very powerful because it enables mechanized infantry. Um, so if we look at his empire, uh, you can see that uh, he has a lot of cities. He has actually three, six, seven, eight, nine cities, and he's struggling with happiness. All of his core cities, Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, and so on are quite large, a uh, population like 12 to 18, and he's suffering from happiness problems. And this is because he didn't really look forward into um, what type of victory he's aiming for. Um, because your, so your social policies need to reflect the type of empire you're going for. And in this case, he has a large empire, too large for his social uh, for his social policies to to be able to support, and his cities are quite large in themselves. So, I guess the first step in uh, planning your conquests um, on this map in this situation would be to take care of your happiness problems and to prevent your cities from growing any further. Because having 15 to 18 population cities is quite enough for any type of victory you're aiming for at this. Uh, stage of the game at the start of the industrial era. The only reason he's happy right now is because he has all his military in his cities. Uh, if he starts removing the riflemen from his cities to go start fighting, he goes negative happy. 
he gets very unhappy very quickly. Uh, so for Kyoto, um, or whichever city has the strongest uh, wonder production, the first thing I would do is start working on Circus Maximus. Uh, that gives you plus five happy across the board. It means at minimum you can take a few units out of your cities uh, to go fight. And I would prioritize the happiness buildings over uh, getting the uh, uh, anything else. Because um, if you take a look at his cities, he's definitely a city builder. I'm looking at Tokyo right now, and he's got a lot of buildings in there. Indeed, he does. And that's one of the things uh, that you, um, as players, need to um, plan for, is when you're going to war and when do you plan to be in peace. So in this case, if he's planning to go to war, which he probably will, you need to prepare for that in advance, 10, 20, 30 turns. You need to build units, you need to prepare your techs, you need to upgrade your units to hire, you know, to new new available units and so on. So um, at this stage of the game, if you're going for a real domination victory, you need to be pumping out a lot of, again, units. Yeah, well definitely. Oh, and for the city management, there's this little button here called Avoid Growth. Um, every single one of your cities should have that clicked right now uh, if you want to maintain some happiness while you're fighting. Because uh, every time you take a city, you're going to take a happiness hit. So when you go to, go to war, uh, as before we already started talking about, you need to have some happiness ready uh, for when you take those cities. Um, and every time you grow, you're going to lose happiness and you'll never get it back. So you really, really need to uh, set all your cities to avoid growth right now. Adding to that, he should definitely trade for resources, for happiness resources he can. Yeah, uh, if we take a look over at, say, Harun, who's friendly with him. Uh, he's got two uh, luxury resources here, uh, both wine and incense. So you could easily buy it for uh, gold per turn. So probably 18 would probably be about right. And then if you look over here at Augustus, um, you have two uh, luxury resources that you can sell to Augustus. So in that case, I would sell it him the two resources for 18 gold per turn. And that way your two friends, uh, Augustus can give you 18 gold per turns for your two resources. You give 18 gold per turn to uh, Harun for his two resources. And then you get 10 more uh, happiness out of the deal. Uh, so that can be used as a nice little buffer. Indeed. So now let's take a brief look at the real, probably the first step in preparing the war, um, which is diplomacy. Let's, let, let's take a look at the uh, diplomatic situation in the world. Um, so yeah, if we look into our global politics, um, right now King Patrick's at war with the Ottomans. And otherwise, uh, Darius is at war with Mongolia. There's quite a few denouncements back and forth between the uh, AIs, so you can use that to your advantage. Genghis is also at war with Arabia, but that doesn't really matter. And otherwise, everybody's either peaceful or, or you know, uh, just a little mad at each other, uh, as well as Arabia's allied with most of the city-states. Uh, so you do have to watch out for that. Indeed, the diplomatic victory might be the biggest threat in this game, but that's not going to happen so fast. So in any case, King Patrick has enough time to actually gain the domination victory before the UN is built. Oh, definitely. Um, and one of those things for looking forward on happiness uh, is that his next social policy is going to come up in a number of turns, probably about 20 to 30. Um, I think we would definitely both suggest freedom uh, as that policy. Um, freedom gives you half the unhappiness uh, from specialists. Now, since you have a lot of really big cities and a lot of buildings that have the specialists, if you start filling them up uh, with people, every two specialists is effectively one unhappiness uh, that you don't have to deal with. You can easily go to replaceable parts and build the uh, Statue of Liberty. 
Yep, definitely. Um, and with that great scientist that he's going to get, uh, that should give him a huge head start on uh, building it. So, um, obvious happiness is our big problem to make sure that it's dealt with before starting a war. But after starting the war, where should he go? And what should he do? So, although it's a large map, uh, I think we both con uh, concur that the uh, general principle that should lead him is to to take his army, which he has now, and maybe wait for uh, the infantry technology, and then uh, start by conquering Babylon, and continuing to Persia, and then France. Um, at that time, when he conquers France, he can easily s uh, build another army, and go west, and then first conquer um, Russia, and leave, basically leave, um, two farther away opponents, uh, which is um, Arabia and Rome for last. One of the things to watch out for is since you have a happiness problem, only keep the cities that you absolutely need to keep. Um, all other cities either raise them, uh, which will give you temporary unhappiness if they're small enough, um, or sell them to another AI, um, even if you just have to give it away. Uh, but make sure that you do have open borders first, otherwise your units will get teleported. So with the capitals, you personally do not have to be the one to hold them all. You just need to ha make sure that the original owner is not the one. But I would keep a few of them, uh, like Babylon here. Uh, you don't have gold in the resources. Uh, so just take a quick look at the resources and happiness. For your resources mm -hmm. available, uh, there is no gold available and uh, if you look over there at uh, Persepolis, uh, Persepolis has ivory which he also does not have. So keeping some cities that can give you uh, happiness resources that you do not have is a good plan. Indeed. So to conclude, his army, his tech, uh, King Patrick is doing great. What he needs to take care of is happiness and just start conquering stuff, <laughs> basically. I yeah. mean, he has everything he needs. He has great cities. Uh, I would just like to add, he, he should make more lumber mills and mines in his core cities because growth is now over. So he can just switch those tiles into real production tiles. And he, he has a monster economy uh, He can uh, uh, that can support lots of units and, and high-tech units. And he just needs to simply make two armies one for the east, one for the west. <laughs> there will be a Russian front again. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's basically all he needs. And he has plenty of time before the the uh, time victory uh, starts kicking in to conquer the whole world, basically. Oh, definitely. Uh, fully agree on that. Happiness and, s and empire management is the keys to, uh, to making this game work out very well. Um, so boost that happiness any way you possibly can. Um, definitely avoid growth. You do not want to be growing anymore. Um, and ensure that uh, you keep your happy going. Sell cities as you go and just go have fun crushing the, the cities. Um, this is Prince, so the AI won't have that many units. Um, and even still, their city defenses are pretty low uh, given the eras. So you're not really going to have any problems with just a few advanced units walking up and uh, just trashing everything. And you are o Oda, so you can have melee units walk up, take some damage, and they'll still fight at full strength. Uh, and that will uh, very much get you through uh, the rest of this game. Yep. So um, uh, thank you, King Patrick, for, uh, for submitting this game. I hope we... Uh, gave you some good advice and to other viewers as well and see you in the next video which will be up shortly i guess in a day or two okay uh yeah thanks everybody for watching and uh, we'll see you next time